Look at your surroundings. Pipelines are everywhere, in the walls, under your feet, bringing us the resources we need to power our cars, build great cities, and keep us warm. Designing and building pipelines involves many people with a wide range of skill sets. But it's not just about creating new pipelines. Managing existing pipelines is important to balance the needs of society and the needs of our environment. How it all comes together is a fascinating story. It starts in your basement and stretches across continents. It's a story made of millions of moments told by thousands of people who dedicate their careers to keeping modern life flowing. Pipelines have been around for a long time. It used to be that a pipeline could only move liquids and gases for a few producers in a month. Nowadays, the same pipeline can serve hundreds of suppliers in a month. It's a huge increase in complexity. I'm Brian. I have a diploma in computer science and I'm an IT advisor. And I'm Christine. I've been a project manager for five years. Brian and I work on a team that creates software systems that determine how pipelines operate. We're working on a project now that'll help a pipeline grow from serving a handful of producers to over a hundred. You might think that the best way to move more liquids and gases in a month is to build more pipes. Well, there are more efficient and cost-effective ways to do it. To increase the capacity of this pipeline, we're writing a computer program that will help control room operators manage traffic and mix products. My knowledge of programming languages helps me plan and design an interface that will make it easy for people to do their everyday tasks. That frees personnel to focus on making other aspects of the business more efficient. We also run virtual simulations that show how various changes or computer programming upgrades will affect performance before we actually make any physical changes. As a project manager, I'm accountable to the client and also to our executive branch for making sure the project gets completed according to the requirements. It's a lot of responsibility, and it's up to me to make sure the team stays motivated. Right, Brian? You bet. We have an amazing team that has been creating solutions that will be used for years to come. A pipeline might seem straightforward. Pump fluid in one end and retrieve it at the other. But there's a lot of equipment in between that needs upkeep. The line that my team is responsible for stretches for several hundred kilometers across a lot of remote areas. So today, we're going for a chopper ride. Hey, I'm Nathan. I'm an electrical technologist. We're on our way to check some readings at a valve site. As an electrical technologist, I do a lot of different things when I'm out on the job, even helping out as a maintenance team member. Today, we're surveying the pipeline path for unusual activity. We look for wildlife, signs of corrosion, or ground settling, which could expose pipe. If we spot anything out of the ordinary, we check it out and fix the problem. We've been getting some unusual pressure readings from this valve site, so I'm gonna run a test to verify that our gauges are working properly. In this case, it looks like we have a faulty transmitter, so I'm gonna replace it and ensure that all instruments are properly calibrated. When I'm done, we'll head back in the chopper and find out what we're doing tomorrow. That's what's cool about this job. Every day we're doing something different. People often ask me, how can one person spend all day every day thinking about rust? It, it's actually not just one person. It's a whole team of people dedicated to corrosion prevention. I'm Julie, and I'm a senior technologist in charge of protective coatings. And I'm Russell. I'm an engineer specializing in cathodic protection. I work with Julie on the corrosion protection team. Corrosion is influenced by a variety of factors, and we have many different ways to prevent it, but it takes some specialized expertise. 
Now today, we're in the field where our colleagues have just installed a section of pipe underneath a river. Now, we want to make sure this area is restored to its original condition and kept beautiful, and that the oil stays in the pipeline where it belongs. This pipe has been painted already. As a specialist in coatings, I'm responsible for finding the right coating materials. I test them for things like heat resistance, flexibility, and resistance to chemicals and pressure. But as you can imagine, a pipe that's just been dragged underneath a riverbed may have rubbed against some rocks and shed some of its protective coating. And so, if the protective coating is no longer uniform, the steel in this pipe may be exposed to moisture and chemicals in the soil. But, when you understand the chemistry of corrosion, you begin to see other ways to protect the integrity of the steel. By continuously electrifying the pipe in a certain way, we can redirect the corrosion from the pipe to a sacrificial anode, which will corrode in place of the pipe. This will protect the pipeline for decades to come. Wow, I'm glad I paid attention in chemistry class. That's the great thing about corrosion protection. The scientific principles you learn in your training can extend the life of the pipeline, improve safety, and help protect the environment. And we get to visit all kinds of interesting places like this. The building and operation of pipelines is complex and challenging. Every aspect takes creative thinking. Pursuing training in engineering, science, and technology can open up countless opportunities for you and pipelines. It's a field full of exciting challenges and intriguing stories. Is the next story going to be yours?